I mean, it's been his fantasy ever since. Mm. Oh, <laughs> shit, babes, we're gonna be late for our own show. What? Oh, crap. Oh, you know, we've gotta do that TV thing. <laughs> Wait, how do I look? All right, for your age. Oh, you bitch, I'll get you. Go on. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Yeah. I'm going. Oh, shit, let's go. Come on, hello, darlings. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Terminal CTV, your ultimate destination in weird and wonderful content. I'm your hostess, Veronica Jean Jones, for Jojo for short, and this little minx is Katja Kokov. You get the gist. Well, thank you for JJ. I hope you're all strapped in for today's show, coming at you live from our fabulous Northbridge studio. It's so exciting, and it's Pride Week, and we've got some great stories to explore, and some serious issues to address as well. How serious? Well. What do you think about the priest in Perth who is performing live exorcisms to people who are possessed? Are you for real? Mm. Well, that's what Amandine went to find out with her story, Devil Talk. Bless her cotton socks. Well, I'm excited to see where I can find the best long black in town. <laughs> and we're also going to see what has the people of Perth dreaming of Johnny Depp. Oh, you don't want to know what makes me dream about Johnny Depp. No, no, we don't. We've also got a story that might make you think again before using those online dating apps. <laughs> We do have people who are possessed. God the Father. God the Son. It's out there. The devil's out there. Coffee is the seed of a fruit, so it should taste like a fruit. And being a fruit, it seems it also changes. Even if Australia does have Foxtel getting shows like The Walking Dead, Breaking Bad and Game of Thrones, Australia still resorts to downloading these programs. Amazing! I can't wait to see them all. But first, let's have a look at Amandine's exorcism story made here in Perth. I never would have thought that there would be real exorcisms here in Perth. Mm, well, funny you should say that, because that's the thing. Is it real, or is it just religious fantasy? Let's find out. for whatever reason, and I can't really tell you the reason, an increasing um, interest in exorcism. Police said the mother, Zakia Avery, and another woman, Monifa Sanford, who was at the scene, believed they were performing an exorcism. We are seeing an increase, I think, in the um, propensity for people to go into demonic stuff. Possession in itself means that you don't own yourself anymore. So in another word, you have a demon there who is owning you. That's possession. Well, it's not the same as Hollywood, let me tell you. There have been some people that could have gone to Hollywood that I've dealt with who have been extremely nasty to me. We don't have uh, head turning, green vomit and all the rest of the stuff or priests flying out through windows. But we do have people who are possessed. How do you know all this is true? And my answer simply is, walk a day in my shoes and you'll see how true it is. It's out there. The devil's out there. Walk away from me. Get away from me. Get away from me. Thing is, demons are, um, they're like very, very badly behaving creatures, I suppose. So they will try you. I'm always um, aware of what can happen. Uh, I do a lot of praying before I go there. And sometimes I take somebody with me Yes, we've had the contorting, we've had um, 
levitation and those sorts of odd things. If you say you are seeing demons, it's because a priori you believe that it's possible to see demons. Yeah, it can be very scary. I mean, if you've got somebody laying on the floor, he's got 12 demons in them, and it takes three hours to get rid of them, and they start vomiting, coughing, dry reaching, screaming at you, swearing at you, slapping at you, trying to pull your crucifix off your throat. Uh, those sort of things are pretty ordinary stuff and uh, very scary. Why people might react to a particular ritual being performed over them is probably a very, you know, it would vary from individual to individual. Um, and whether or not a person perceives that as the action of demons or as the action of, say, some kind of mental illness, that is really in the eye of the beholder. So, I don't get it. Are demons real or not? Well, I think if you believe you can see demons, you can probably see demons. Well, I know what I see. I bet you see a vision of beauty. I always thought there was no good and evil. The universe just is. Good and evil are merely frames of perception. The scariest aspect of that story is some people have such a skewed perception of reality, they are haunted by what they see to be demons. Uh, Earl, you feeling all right? Sorry, I think I just blanked out for a second. That's all right. I think you need to lay what down, happened? darling. That's fine. That's oh, fine. This just must be how Molly Meldrum then. always felt. Oh, I know, darling. That's all right. But I can do the show on my own. In our next story, we can look at one of the city's defining industries, coffee. Like hell you will. My name is Mitchell Fink. I'm the head barista here at Gordon Street Garage. My main role here is one of quality control, so ensuring that our standards are met every single day, that the copies that we're sending out are exactly what we want to present from ourselves. Also communicating our message to customers at the most basic level. Um, the idea is that coffee is the seed of a fruit, so it should taste like a fruit. And being a fruit, it's seasonal, so it changes, and it's not a static thing. With time, though, I realised that you know some coffee shops make coffee better than other coffee shops. Coffee means different things to different people. I've really noticed that people talk about coffee as in, like, I like to have my coffee. They sort of talk about it in a very sort of like ownership kind of way. People would say, I'll have a Coke, but they'll talk about their coffee using a more um, pronoun -y, my sort of um, thing. I definitely wouldn't want to be anything else. My name's Tom. I'm a barista and roaster at Gordon Street Garage. Basically, my job is to roast the coffee here in-house and then serve it to customers. So what we've been doing today is cupping coffee, and that's the way that we taste all of our different uh, types of coffee and determine uh, how to roast them and how to serve them to our customers. I really love my job. I can get in every day, make myself a coffee, uh, enjoy it, and throughout the day, you have different types of customers who drink different types of coffee. And I think the best thing is probably introducing people to coffee and to new ways of drinking coffee, and that's why I like working here. We offer some different things that people may not have tasted before, like espresso, filter coffee, uh, it, roasted in different ways to what coffee shops usually would. So I love working it. Gotcha. You've perked up a little bit, haven't you, Dal? <laughs> Very funny. I had a little pick-me-up from our friends down at Little Willie's Cafe on William Street. I'm sure there was nothing little about it. <sighs> You're so mature. Wait, actually, you are mature. Or should I say old? I would say wise. And I think we need to go to a commercial break. Now, Miss Kokov, unlike you, I don't download torrents and nasty things from all of those websites online. Oh, please. If you knew how to work a computer, you'd be all over it. Don't get all high and mighty on me. Well, I don't like the idea of doing something illegal. Although I'd love to do a pirate show routine. Ha! 
You mean like your beard marriage? No, I mean like Ash Day's story about modern day pirates. Let's watch. Pirate? No, I'm Johnny Depp. A pirate in a boat? Johnny Depp! My name is Liam Tickner. I work at the local cinema. When I hear the world's pirate, I obviously think of downloading um, TV shows, movies, all the stuff that can be accessed by the internet. So obviously it's pirating over the internet, meaning uh, downloading from the internet, movies, songs, everything like I said before. Back in 1999, two brothers, Sean and John Fanning, created a file sharing website called Napster. It allowed peer-to-peer -peer sharing online with other people. That's why it's called P2P. From that, many files were shared and it soon spawned many other sharing sites and programs. Over the past few years, internet piracy and file sharing is the strongest activity on the internet. But where is downloading done the most? America? The UK? Actually, it's Australia, Perth to be precise. Even if Australia does have Foxtel getting shows like The Walking Dead, Breaking Bad and Game of Thrones, Australia still resorts to downloading these programs. I think it's wrong from an economic point of view. We do, all places do lose money. That's like blockbuster when our business from all the downloads and all the access to the internet now. Australia is also demanding Netflix, a program that allows people to download movies and TV shows for a cheap rental price. But as of now, it appears we won't be getting it anytime soon. Yes, definitely. The introduction by companies like the T-Box, the, I don't know, the Ironet one, but there is an Ironet one, uh, access to internet, and the rising prices in tickets now because people aren't coming any as much as they like to. And so it's come more expensive to the cinema and more likely people will come and download it instead of seeing it. The, the digital downloads weren't so easy then. Yeah, yeah, like the, the advertising about it's like stealing a car or a video or something, not all really all that effective. That's a really hard one because it, it's something people do when behind closed doors. You don't know what goes on behind closed doors at any time. So, yeah, um, it's just too easy to get to it, to get to these sites to download it. Downloading and piracy to my industry, it will definitely increase the cost of most of our products. It will make less people come, it will be in the sales and sooner or later it might be like the DVD shops we might actually run out of business and it will all be online now. It's like a little cheaper but even then I probably Yeah, I think like iTunes is like $2 for a song. Yeah. Oh, that's a bit ridiculous. I don't think I'll ever sell. I'll stop <laughs> when I get caught. <laughs> How it's policed. If it's policed, it's not policed so... I don't believe people care about too much because of that. There's no real penalties enforced. Um, and yeah, a balance of that and social expectations. It's quite socially acceptable to download illegally. Oh, Johnny Depp. I was kind of hoping he would get more screen time. Nah, babe. Copyrighted. He's probably going to take us to court right now. He can take me to court any day. I do, Johnny. <laughs> Not for a wedding, babes. To sue your ass! Well, he can do that too. I confess. I download content. Be careful then, my darling. You never know what viruses you're going to get in your box. <laughs> you never know. You could get in... Someone could hack your email or steal all the money from your bank account. Or leak my nudie pics on the internet. I might break the internet, like Kim Kardashian. Mm, there's something would break, that's for sure. <sighs> Speaking of nudie pics, another online phenomenon all of you single folks out there should know about, online dating. I met my last three exes online. Mm, probably the next three as well. No, nah, I don't use those apps anymore. Too many time wasters and catfish. Andrew?
Yeah. Who wants to know? Well, it's Lauren. Lauren. We organised to meet online. I thought you were a blonde. Well, yeah. Oh, this is my natural colour. I go blonde sometimes, especially for the summer. Oh, OK. Also, your profile says that you're a C cup. Yeah? It's a bit of an exaggeration. I suppose you're not really Italian then either. Yeah, half. <sighs> okay, look, and let's be honest, when was the last time you weighed 65 kilos? Oh my god. Who do you think you are? Oh, I am sick of time wasters and catfish. You could have saved us both a lot of time if you'd just been honest. Excuse me? I don't need this shit. I'm out of here. What a dickhead. See? Told you. <laughs> There's definitely a lot of double standards out there. <gasps> oh my god. That's nearly the end of our show. Not quite though. We've still got a little bit of time for a segment called Crew and A. Oh, and the music video. Oh, those rockers are great. And the outfits. Mm-hmm. There's still plenty more to come right after this quick break. Central Institute of Technology's Media Pathways. The choice is yours. Welcome back. We've just been talking about online dating and all of the weird and wonderful things that go along with it. Turns out I'm not the only one who uses online dating. See, it says here, only five metres away. Oh, where the hell could they be? Let's go find out who they are. Thank you. I'm going to go interview some of our wonderful crew members here. Hello, gorgeous. Oh, What's hey. your name? Jess. Miss Jess. And do you do any online dating here, Miss Jess? I do. That's how I met Ross over there. Oh, right. We'll get to Ross later. And what do you do here, Jess? I'm the producer. Oh, she's the producer. Better watch out. She's important. I'll be back later. Hello, mister. Hello. What's your name? I'm Ash. And what do you do here, Ash? I'm the audio cue guy. The audio cue guy. What a title. Do you have any fun stories to tell me about online dating, Ash? Oh, not really. I haven't used it in a while. Uh, are Bebo and MySpace still available these days? Well, maybe. We'll have to sign you up. <laughs> we'll talk later about that. Hello there, Missy Moo. Hello. What's your name? I'm Alex. And what do you do here, Alex? I'm the floor manager. <laughs> the floor manager. Right. I understand. We've all been that girl. Do you do any online dating, darling? Only sugardaddy.com. Oh, I'll find you on there too. We both got pro styles. That's why she looks so familiar. And last but not least, let's go to our camera guy. What's your name? My name's Ross. Mr. Ross. And have you had any experiences with online dating? Uh, no, I haven't, which is surprising because I think Jess was talking some shit, actually. I know. We'll have to watch out for Jess. I think she might be a catfish. We'll get to that later. Move, bitch. Oh. Oh. Well, there you have it, my dears. That is our show for today. We'll leave you with the music video made right here in the studio. The local band, The Devil in Miss Jones, performing Shake How You Feel. See you next time. Ta-ta. Mwah. Bye-bye. See you at Pride. Happy Pride, everyone. You shake like you feel sorrow For people who never understand We don't take shit in sorrow We just want the chance to stand We all shake till tomorrow I'm gonna push on through my day I never took shit in sorrow Oh, we don't care what you look like 
Oh, what you wait during the week? We just want the chance to speak right. We just want the chance to make. We are straight till tomorrow. Oh, I'm gonna push out through my day. Oh, I never took shit in sorrow. Shame. Thank you.